Most members of the anti-vaccine community have zero training in science or medicine, but there are a few who do. Unfortunately for them, their degrees don't make them any more right. Today, I'll be addressing a doctor who seems to have some pretty strong anti-vax views regarding the flu shot. His name is Dr. Paul Thomas. Dr. Paul here. I'm getting a lot of questions about the flu. It is February 26th, 2018, and 2018 flu season has been a rough one. The 2018 to 2019 flu season ended up ranking as moderate as far as flu seasons go. With that said, an estimated 61,000 people did die of flu in the U.S. that year. And what I want you to be aware of is the fact that we're not getting the whole story. When we look at influenza that's caused by influenza A or B, these are the two strains for which we have a vaccine, they represent, on average, 15% of all illnesses that are called the flu. I'm going to need a citation on that 15% figure, Paul. I looked around, and I'm really not sure where he's getting that number from. Realize that only 15% of the time is it actually influenza A or influenza B. And so, you also need to know that when they say the death was from the flu, they're talking about all 100%, not just the 15%. So in actual fact, very few of the deaths are actually caused by influenza A or influenza B. The way our government, this is the United States of America and their tracking system through the CDC, is all respiratory deaths are classified as influenza. So you could die of a bacterial pneumonia and it's going to be counted as influenza. Well, Paul, that's a very blatant half-truth, and I think you know this. Here's what actually happens. If you go to the doctor with flu-like symptoms, then the doctor will generally follow this flow chart in order to decide how to diagnose and treat you. As you can see, if you are being admitted to the hospital, then it is highly likely that you will be tested for influenza. That means that you will be a confirmed case. These confirmed cases, and sometimes deaths, are reported to the CDC and the CDC then uses these numbers in order to estimate the overall deaths and cases for that year. This estimation system is not perfect. Paul is right about that. But what he didn't tell you is that there are many confirmed cases and many confirmed deaths of influenza every single year. And I just share that so that you can kind of realize you don't need to be afraid of the flu. Most healthy people handle the flu completely fine. It's not a fatal or even serious disease. It's not fun. I've had it before more than once, but it's not something that's going to kill you. This is some pretty awful advice coming from a medical doctor. Are you personally likely to die from influenza? Not really, sure. But the deaths every year are nothing to scoff at. Even though the CDC's estimates are estimates, they range from 12,000 to 60,000 depending on the year and those numbers are fairly confident. Furthermore, if you are a young and healthy individual and not particularly likely to die from the flu, you can still pass it on to an older or younger person who is particularly likely to die from the flu. And that is something to worry about, and a good reason to get your flu shot. But Dr. Paul has problems with that too, doesn't he? So what about the flu shot? You're hearing that it's not a very effective flu shot. The same strains that are going through the United States today went through Australia, they go through the southern hemisphere first, and the flu shot that we're using today here in the United States of America had a 15% effectiveness. Again with this 15% number, he seems to not be very imaginative when he's making up statistics, because the actual effectiveness of the flu vaccine in the 2018 to 2019 season was about 29%. That might sound low, but it does matter. Any expert on infectious disease will tell you that if you can reduce the number of susceptible individuals in a population, then a virus is going to have a much harder time spreading. So that 29% does have a real impact. And even if you get the flu shot and still get sick, you're likely to have a much milder and easier time with the virus. In other words, you're still less likely to die. All right. So remember, only 15% of the cases, 10 to 15% of the cases, are actual influenza. Nope, not true. And then it's, if the flu shot's only 15% effective, we're down to about 1% to 2% effectiveness. Why bother? He did not do the math. 
On top of that, the flu shot can carry risk. If you're getting the multi-dose flu shot, which meaning it's not a single dose, but they're drawing several doses out of the same vial, that flu shot has thimerosal, 25 micrograms of mercury. I was about to say aluminum. 25 micrograms of mercury. Mercury should not be in any vaccine, period. It should be outlawed. And yet 80% of the flu shots going out in the United States of America have mercury. That's criminal. No. Thimerosal is safe, and I'll probably make a video on just that someday. But what's really criminal is your advice, Paul. Now, if you choose to get a single dose, mercury-free, thimerosal-free flu shot, so be it. I'm finding that for pregnant women, it's a bad idea, even though it's being pushed on you by the OBGYNs, because it activates the immune system of your unborn child. And immune activation is one of the known mechanisms, multiple published studies, that this is linked to increased brain development issues, including autism. Like I said, Paul, this advice is what's criminal. A pregnant woman is much more likely to suffer from a severe case of the flu than a non-pregnant woman is. Those complications and fever that come with a flu can also permanently damage a developing baby. A pregnant woman getting a flu vaccine is the most effective step that she can take to prevent this from happening. And finally, there is a large body of scientific studies showing that the flu vaccine is absolutely safe for pregnant women to receive. I'll put the links to those studies in the description. Also, did he really just say that flu vaccines cause autism? The anti-vaxxers can never keep it straight on what actually causes autism. The fact that Paul is a practicing doctor with living patients is really concerning at this point. Should you give it to anybody else? That's a big toss-up because it, we don't have good studies that track long-term health of those who get just the flu shot and those who don't. My experience has been in my practice over many, many years is that the people who don't get the flu shot are actually healthier. There are studies published recently in the last few years showing that those who get sequential flu shots get more flu illness in subsequent years. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to share those studies with us, is he? I'll find them for you. Here is a study done to determine the effectiveness of the flu vaccine in confirmed influenza cases. The researchers wanted to know if the flu vaccine had any effect on the number of confirmed flu cases that were admitted to intensive care units during the 2010 to 2012 seasons. The study was performed by doctors from all over the United States. What they found was that flu shots were effective in reducing the number of children admitted to the intensive care unit with confirmed influenza cases by about 75%. Here's another one. It's a very large Canadian study that aimed to determine the effectiveness of an influenza immunization program that was implemented in Ontario, but not other Canadian provinces. The researchers found that Compared to other provinces that did not implement a universal influenza immunization program, Ontario did report significantly fewer deaths associated with influenza-related illness. Both of these studies and many more directly contradict what Dr. Paul is trying to tell us. So it's somehow it's focusing the immune system on one thing perhaps and, and impairing your ability to screen for all infections. And this is a, a known truth if you really scan the literature that over vaccinating for a lot of things while it might boost specific antibodies for one thing it actually might be impairing your overall immunity that is not a universal truth I've scanned the literature given you some examples and it is not true I don't think you understand how the immune system works so what do you need for a healthy immune system I cover this a lot and I'll cover it again. You want real food, organic, healthy, real food. You want vitamin D, everybody's low, do vitamin D. Reduce stress, exercise, nutrition, sorry, sleep and exercise, healthy biome, and just live in harmony with your world, right? So have a supportive network of people. Well, that's not terrible advice, even if it's a little vague, good doctor. But none of those things are going to be as effective at preventing vaccine-preventable diseases as a vaccine will be. I would say don't worry about it, don't rush out and get a flu shot, eat healthy, and of course always check with your doctor uh, and um, there'll be some conflicting reports about what to do or conflicting advice. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that his lawyers asked him to say that. I want everybody who's watching, you know, get all the information, consult with your physician. I'm just giving you personal opinions and uh, they are science-based, but nevertheless, there's controversy on this topic, right? 
Well, they're not science-based, and I've got the information part covered, Paul. Thanks. Now, we're almost done here, but before I end the video, I want to say just why the flu is something that we should worry about every single year. About 100 years ago, in the years 1918 and 1919, a strain of flu traveled around the world and infected young, old, and healthy individuals and killed in every age group. It ended up killing an estimated 50 million people. That's more than World Wars I and II combined. Every year, the strain of flu that travels around the world is different, and there are biological reasons for that that we understand pretty well. But it also makes it hard to predict when the flu will be bad and when the flu will be more mild. A strain of flu like the 1918-1919 strain could emerge again. And if it does, our best defense against it is the flu vaccine. So, without knowing when the next big one could hit, it's in your best interest to get your flu vaccine every single year. And that's some good advice that Dr. Paul is not going to give out. See you next time.